I just want to keep them coming. That's right. It's your birthday today. Is it? It is. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to you. Tribute at One Loudon is an assisted living and memory care community located in Ashburn, Virginia. We took, uh, I think, a very aggressive approach on testing out of an abundance of caution. And like hundreds of other senior living communities across the country, recently found out about its first group of COVID-19 positive residents. And yet life continues inside. Put your hands up. Hey guys, I'm Les Stretch, president of Thrive Senior Living. And if you've seen the news lately, you've seen the stories of nursing homes with 60 and 70 residents who passed away due to COVID-19 and, and our hearts break for them. Uh, but because of visitor restrictions, uh, both you and the media can't get in to see what's going on and the impacts to both residents and the impacts to the brave people who are coming to work every day. So we thought we'd show you. When how did you feel when, it first, when you first found out they were positive in the building? Honestly, I was, I was pretty scared. Yeah. I was really scared. A little nerve wracking because I'm always worried about bringing it in or if I have it on me. So I just, I want the best for the residents and I want the best for my family. But as people process that anxiety and fear, uh, oftentimes that overlaps with, I'm supposed to be at work tomorrow. And uh, you know, a lot of people making the decision that like, hey, I'm not coming in. And you know, I think the, the question then becomes, how do you respond to that, right? And uh, what we found is just creating uh, a safe place for people to come back to. So it was kind of like breathtaking at first, you know, it was a setback, but then again, it was like, oh wow, I really get to go in and be an impact again. You can see those who have stepped up uh, to that position, even though they're scared, even though their families might be saying, stay away, uh, they're still coming in oh, with a smile. You saw one of our team members, Shannon, that you know, and when you and saw I her. hugged her, and then I thought, oh no, I'm not supposed to do this. But it's human, right? It is human. For me, it is. We did it with every single shift to literally meet with them, and like you said, sit in that moment of fear, sadness, anger, I hate this, I love this, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know where I'm going, yeah. and like sit in it. And we did those for like a few days, like sat in those moments with every single shift. And then it was like, then after now it was like meeting with them, how to go it went great oh now we got to go do this now yeah. now i need to go now i just need more gloves over here assisted living communities with COVID outbreaks worked closely with county and local governments to establish clean entrances and dirty exits into isolation areas to make sure the team was safe and residents could heal and, you know the needs of humans haven't changed so access to indoors and outdoors is crucial for the healing process now we're able to separate the positive and the negative residents. And we're now having residents who originally tested positive are now negative. Mm -hmm. So we're able to separate and start to see some progress in folks getting well. From and, healing? From yeah. healing. I was in another community and I came because I heard and I knew and I was like, hey, somebody's gotta, somebody's gotta connect these families. Hey, Mr. Ferguson. Mm -hmm. You got some people who would like to look at you, say hello. They gotta have somebody in there to boost them up you know what right. I'm saying and that's what I do like I am that's the booster of the boosters you know what I'm saying <laughs> we're gonna smile and do some laughing and I was like if I could just be a beacon of light even if it's a little bit need to make sure that the team members are going in and laying eyes on them and saying hey what can I do for you? You know, you know do you need something just so they don't feel like they're in a box dining is always important but now with them being confined in their rooms you want to make it fun you step in and you knock Hi! Hey! Ciao! <laughs> Hi! This is a beautiful lady! You are loved deeply, and um, I know you told me you were struggling with uh, depression. Depression. And I'm telling you this, like, you, we, you look at my eyes. I'm not going to stop praying for you, Miss Joan. I love I don't think you will, for some <laughs> reason. When I look in those eyes, I think you are telling me the truth. I am. I kind of put myself out there and said that there's any phone calls that I can make via FaceTime. And it's different coming from a maintenance guy. Everyone that I've done this for has texted me right afterwards and with hearts and emojis and everything on how grateful they are. Thank you, Grandpa. It's Kelly. How good that they felt. Oh, yeah. That's a beautiful, beautiful view. Beautiful view. Yeah. And yeah. then the third and fourth floor tests were done yesterday. Yes. Once we get those results, that's when we can kind of start talking about reopening the community going from isolation to quarantine status. Yeah. Alice, how'd you feel when when the uh, when they we first found out there was COVID in the building? Anyway, it was very scary. Uh -huh. But the thing is, um, you know, 
this is my workplace, more or less my home. It's like you are in the house, they say snake is in the house. You can't run away. If there's a you snake in the house, you can't run you away. You can't run away. How do we continue to protect ourselves even as the nation around us begins to yeah. open up? And you know, we know that we protect the most vulnerable part of all this. Uh, some of the most important work that's being done in all this is happening in our communities. And it's important that we don't lose sight of that. Watching these brave warriors stay in Airbnbs and hotels to keep their families safe, only to go back to work the next day to keep residents safe, um, <laughs> heroes. Uh, I mean, uh, running up and down the hallways, not just to um, check on residents, but to engage with them. Um, <laughs> it was one of the most inspiring things I've seen in a really long time.